Who are the Houthis? Hello, friends. Today, we're diving deep into one of the most mysterious and controversial groups in the Middle East. Are you ready? Because this video is going to turn what you know upside down. Who are these Houthis? How did they transform from a small rebel group into a regional power? And why is the whole world talking about them? If you're curious about the answers to these questions, sit back and watch the video until the end. Because today, we're going to take the story of the Houthis from the very beginning and bring it to the present day. But first, as always, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications. This video is the first episode of our new series, Hidden Forces of the Middle East. Each week, we'll explore a different group in the region, so you don't want to miss it. Now, let's take a look at the map of Yemen and start the story of the Houthis from the beginning. Yemen is an ancient country located in the south of the Arabian Peninsula, with a history dating back to 2200 BCE. In ancient times, these lands were known as Arabia Felix, or Happy Arabia. Unfortunately, today it is one of the poorest and most unstable regions in the world. And in the north of this complex country, in the mountainous Sada region, there is a group, the Houthis. So who are the Houthis? How did they emerge? And why are they so important? The Houthis are named after their founder, Hussein Badreddin al-Houthi. But their story goes much further back, to the time of the Zaidi Imamate. I hear you asking, what is Zaidism? Let's take a little historical journey. Zaydism is one of the main branches of Shia Islam. It is named after Zayd bin Ali, the son of Muhammad al-Baqir, the fifth Imam of the Shia. This sect emerged in the 8th century and has some significant differences from other Shia groups. For example, Zaydis, unlike other Shia groups, accept the first three caliphs. This makes them closer to Sunni Islam. Also, according to Zaydi belief, Imams should not only come from the lineage of Ali, but also actively fight against oppression. The Zaydi Imamate ruled in Yemen from the 9th century until 1962, over a period of more than a thousand years, making it one of the longest-lasting theocratic regimes in the world. But in 1962, a revolution occurred, and the Zaydi Imamate was overthrown. The Yemen Arab Republic was established. This marked the beginning of a difficult period for the Zaydis. The new Republican government suppressed Zaydi traditions and culture. The Zaydis felt increasingly marginalized and excluded. And it was at this point that Hussein Badreddin al-Houthi entered the scene. Hussein al-Houthi was a charismatic leader and a learned cleric. In the late 1990s, he started a movement called Believing Youth. What was the aim of this movement? To preserve Zaydi identity and culture, and to address Yemen's social and economic problems. Initially, this movement was a peaceful cultural awakening. Al-Houthi taught young people about Zaydi history and beliefs, raising awareness about social issues. But things changed in 2004. What happened? Hussein Al-Houthi started an armed uprising against the Yemeni government. Why? Al-Houthi's claims were, the Yemeni government was collaborating with the U.S. and Israel. There was systematic discrimination against Zaydis, Northern Yemen was economically neglected. Wahhabi ideology was spreading in Yemen, threatening Zaydi identity. This uprising caused a major crisis in Yemen. Intense clashes occurred between government forces and al-Houthi's followers. And the result? In September 2004, Hussein al-Houthi was killed. But Hussein's death was not the end of the movement. On the contrary, the Houthis grew stronger. Why? Because Hussein had become a martyr, a symbol. Leadership of the movement passed to Hussein's brother, Abdul Malik al-Houthi. Abdul Malik may not have been as charismatic as his brother, but he was a smart strategist. He transformed the Houthis from just a rebel movement into an organized political and military force. By 2010, the Houthis had become a significant power in northern Yemen. And at this very moment, the Arab Spring erupted. The Arab Spring swept through the entire Middle East, and Yemen was no exception. In 2011, massive protests began against Ali Abdullah Saleh, 
who had been in power for 33 years. In this chaotic environment, the Houthis seized the opportunity. They expanded their control in northern Yemen. How? Here's the step-by-step -step rise of the Houthis. First, they took full control of Sada province. Then, they spread to neighboring provinces. They formed alliances with local tribes. They struck a deal with their old enemy, Ali Abdullah Saleh. Yes, you heard that right. And the result? In September 2014, the Houthis captured the capital, Sana'a. This event shook not only Yemen, but the entire region. Why? Because the Houthis had transformed from a small rebel group into a force determining the fate of the country. But how did the Houthis gain this power? Here are some factors. Emphasizing Zaidi identity gave them a broad base of support. Their anti-corruption rhetoric helped them gain popular support. Their military strategies were effective and successful. They received external support. From whom? Here's where it gets complicated. Yes, friends, now we come to the most controversial part. The Iran factor. Saudi Arabia and other Gulf countries claim that the Houthis are supported by Iran. Is this claim true? There's no clear answer to this question. But let's look at the information we have. Iran provides political support to the Houthis. That's a fact. Many experts believe the advanced weapons used by the Houthis are Iranian-made. The slogans and ideology of the Houthis show similarities to Iran's revolutionary rhetoric. But the Houthis deny these claims. They define themselves as an independent movement and say their relationship with Iran is exaggerated. So what's the truth? This is one of the biggest mysteries of the Yemen crisis. At this point, the conflict takes on an international dimension. Because Saudi Arabia sees the support of the Houthis by Iran as a threat to its security. In March 2015, do you know what happened? A coalition led by Saudi Arabia intervened militarily in Yemen. Thus, the Yemeni civil war turned into an international conflict. On one side is the Saudi-led coalition. On the other are the Houthis and the groups supporting them. This conflict has unfortunately led to a major humanitarian crisis. According to the UN, over 20 million people in Yemen are at risk of famine. The country is experiencing one of the world's largest humanitarian crises. So, how do the Houthis survive under these harsh conditions? Here are some factors. Local support. Many Yemenis see the Houthis as a movement resisting foreign powers. Difficult terrain. Yemen's mountainous terrain gives the Houthis a military advantage. Effective guerrilla tactics. The Houthis use guerrilla warfare methods rather than conventional army tactics. External support. The previously mentioned Iran factor. And of course, there is a very controversial issue. Smuggling. International reports suggest that the Houthis engage in arms and drug smuggling. It is claimed that weapons from Iran are smuggled into Yemen by sea. These allegations may explain the Houthis' funding sources and military strength. Now let's talk about the military power of the Houthis. Initially a small guerrilla group, the Houthis now have a powerful army equipped with modern weapons. Especially in recent years, they have made significant progress in drones, UAVs, and ballistic missiles. Using these advanced weapons, they have carried out incredible operations. For example, do you know what happened in 2019? The Houthis launched an attack on the facilities of Saudi Arabia's giant oil company, Aramco. This attack shook global oil markets and demonstrated how advanced the Houthis' military capabilities had become. So where do they get these advanced weapons? This is where the Iran factor comes into play again. Many experts believe that the drones and missiles used by the Houthis are Iranian-made, or at least produced, with Iranian technology. But the Houthis claim they produce these weapons themselves. They even occasionally show their weapons factories to the media. Another important feature of the Houthis is their media strategy. They have a TV channel called Al Masira and actively use social media. They make extensive use of modern communication tools to spread their propaganda and gather supporters. Al Masira TV 
acts as the official spokesperson for the Houthis. Through this channel, they announce their military operations, deliver political messages, and mobilize the public. They are also quite active on social media platforms. They have thousands of followers on platforms like Twitter, Facebook, and Telegram. So what is the ideology of the Houthis? Let's take a look at that too. The Houthis call themselves Ansarullah, meaning helpers of Allah. Their slogan is quite striking. God is great, death to America, death to Israel, curse on the Jews, victory to Islam. This slogan clearly reveals the anti-imperialist and anti-Zionist stance of the Houthis. But at the same time, it is seen as extreme and dangerous by some circles. The ideology of the Houthis consists of three main elements, Zaidi Islam. As we mentioned earlier, Zaidism is a branch of Shia Islam. But the Houthis' interpretation of Zaidism contains a revolutionary and political dimension, anti-imperialism. The Houthis see themselves as a movement resisting foreign powers and imperialism. This is why they are against the US and Israel. Social justice. The Houthis frequently emphasize social justice, anti-corruption, and addressing social inequalities. This rhetoric increases their popular support. Finally, let's talk about the future of the Houthis. The Yemen crisis does not seem to be resolved in the short term. The Houthis are likely to remain a major power in the country for a long time. But there are two main scenarios for the future. Peace process. If all parties agree on a ceasefire and a political solution, Yemen could enter a peaceful period. In this case, the Houthis could become a legitimate political actor. Continuing conflict. If the war continues, Yemen could turn into a failed state. In this scenario, the Houthis could try to increase their control over the country. The Houthis are a dynamic and complex movement. Their power, strategy, and future actions will continue to influence not only Yemen, but the entire Middle East. Friends, the Houthis are not just a group confined to Yemen. They are also an indicator of the broader dynamics and complexities of the Middle East. That's why understanding them is so important. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and share. And if you have any questions or comments about the Houthis, drop them below. We'll be happy to respond. And remember to subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss our upcoming videos on other hidden forces of the Middle East. Stay curious, stay informed, and see you in the next video.